The 4.1 map ca came from the Culture Cafe and put, and the, at the Culture Cafe there were several dots all over a map. And what we did when we created that 4.1 map was kind of compile where were there heavy areas of dots. And so that was kind of a representation of where a lot of dots were. Maybe they weren't exactly at that spot, but that's kind of where we, we created larger dots to represent those smaller dots all everywhere. Um, then when we had the public open house in March, um, we had very specific locations mapped on a, on a map asking people to prioritize, give us their Basically priorities. The top, yeah. yeah. And one of those was that main and C, and then also the north entry was on that map. And majority of people selected, a large number of people selected that north couplet at main and C. Okay. And like I, and I, like I said, I don't have a particular problem <coughs> with it. I'm just trying to understand sure. the movement. Okay. Mr. Mayor. John. Uh, according to the we. <clears throat> the agenda, we are supposed to receive the public art master plan or take other, other such actions deemed appropriate. And that does not mean that we accept the plan, does it? More or less. Well, if we if we um, <laughs> receive the plan and we accept it, yeah, we've accepted it. Right? No, we, no what I'm saying is, that. are we saying that, that we're going to do everything that they say in this plan? Because if that's the case, I have some questions. Okay. I have some issues. Okay, well, hang on a second, John. I'm going to have Gary Reedner. It's similar to the plans that have been adopted, the Water and Sewer Comprehensive Plan, Sanitation Comprehensive Plan, Parks and Rec Master Plan. Uh, these are were created as a guidance for those departments and those those project areas. Council typically accepts them, uses them as a roadmap. If you're asking whether by <coughs> accepting this tonight that you are stating that the public arts ordinance will increase from 1% to 1.25%, that these particular projects will move forward at a certain rate, still subject to your discretion as setting the budget and setting the work plans for the department. So it's, it's, the, it's the plan put forward for your acceptance, review, and to utilize as you're, as you're setting your policies. So no, you're not saying that everything in here is going to be done along the time frames that is being suggested. It, or anything. Yeah, it'll be weighed against other city priorities. I remember there was a question when the sewer plant or sewer comprehensive plan came in, or water, I can't remember which, and the discussion was by, by accepting this, are we saying we will do all of these $89 million worth of projects? That was the water. Yeah, and it was, the answer was no, we will priorities will change it's a road map and uh, hopefully you, you, you'll utilize it as you're developing your policies as you go along but this is what the state of the of the um, department is the state of the plan and how you want to move forward mr. mayor um, hang on a second uh, Johnny that suffice your uh, question okay well, I'll go to Wayne first and I'll come back to you well, well I think one of the things that John you're concerned about is by accepting this plan that it's all that boom, that's what it is, and everything just starts to happen without any council input. As Gary has indicated, I don't believe that that's the case at all. Everything is incremental. This is, as Gary said, is a roadmap that they put forward, which I think is a good roadmap with all things being positive. But as we go along, we'll see how that happens. Now, I do have a question, however, okay. and that has to do with the increase in the funding from, uh, well, with the uh, first of all, with the public public projects going from one to one point two for five, one, one from one percent to one point two five percent, and then with the urban renewal district from one percent to two percent. So I guess my question is why two percent for urban renewal and one point two five for standard public projects? Want me to answer that? Okay. So one point two five. Currently, we don't have a maintenance line item for our existing collection that we have right now. So when you have um, works that need attention or repair or um, say something happens to something, the mural on the pool is a perfect example. It's in great shape. The plinths that hold the sculptures, the belays sculptures in front of the herc are not in good shape. 
you know, they're going to have to be replaced at some point. So we need the, if you do 1.25, the 2.5 could go into a maintenance line item to secure okay, funding. I didn't, I didn't have so much of a problem Kathleen was going to 1.25. It was just why the difference, 1.25 on so one category and 2% on the other. I Karen's got a point. Karen can answer the UR. The 1% uh, the for Onyx Ordinance does not address the, the urban renewal area. Uh, the urban renewal, uh, urban renewal Agency has adopted 1% as the Council did. Um, the 1% for urban renewal is on the increment generated. So it would come in, whatever increment it is, it would be 1% of that. The 1% for arts ordinance that the Council passed is only 1% of certain public projects which are constructed. Street maintenance projects, for instance, underground uh, utility projects are exempted from that. And the city, frankly, does not do that many projects. No. Um, so at 1%, you're not going to get a lot of income. Mm -hmm. So it was just a way. And urban renewal areas typically try to incorporate more art components and make it more, uh, especially the legacy crossing area, make it more livable and an inviting place. So it makes sense to, to at least present that proposal to the I, I, I understand that. I guess my question isn't clear. Oh. Why 2% for URA instead of 1.25? Your Honor. That 1.25 in one area and 2% in another area. You can answer difference? that, Bill? If I might. the Because you're talking about two very different numbers. If you, if you are looking at large construction projects that are that are multi-million dollar projects at the one and a quarter percent on the city side that will generate a fairly large amount of money. When you're looking at one percent of the increment in Legacy Crossing, that's generating about a little over a thousand dollars a year. And so in the seven years the district's been established, about $4,500 has been put aside and allocated for public art projects. So it really was a larger number because it's a larger number of a much smaller or a larger percentage of a much smaller number to try to generate some some uh, revenue that would help facilitate and accelerate public art installations within the district. And that's still up for the agency's consideration. This is just recommendation. The agency will consider that uh, okay. in the future. Thank Walter? You. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, if, if I'm hearing a couple of the council members, I, I also I, I had a problem with the increased funding, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 in this plan. Gary brought up one of the infrastructure plans we adopted several years ago, and I believe it was the water. Um, and within that, it had a 20 to 50 year plan for capital needs that they could project based upon projected increased population. You're probably going to need a new water tank here, a new well there, a new water main there. <clears throat> but it was framed, I believe, in terms of projections indicate these will be needs. We separately did the a rate increase plan, Gary, which was not part of the master plan, if my memory is correct. I have a problem having this rate increase as part of the master plan. I've got no problem with public art with a couple of particular specific examples, but we won't go there. But I've got a little problem with just putting increased funding in this plan. A little different verbiage could help me, maybe. <coughs> Um, work toward, um, suggested, um, something like that. But I've got, if, if I was hearing John correctly, a little concern about buying the apple and then having to eat it. Um, I would be more comfortable with the plan excluding the rate increases and f framing the 20, no, the 5, 10, whatever the year of the, the, the spreadsheet however many years the plan goes out goes through in terms as a a hoped for needed uh, desired etc type item I could I could understand that and buy that those those are my concerns regarding this and and just to finish remember the, the money that's generated from the city's one percent is put up by the city not by the contractor it comes out of our general fund it doesn't go to streets, it goes to public art. So I'm not suggesting you don't do art, you do streets instead. But be aware, the money doesn't come out of thin air. And the contractor doesn't donate it. He doesn't bring it to town when he drives in from Nampa or somewhere. 
So it comes out of our general fund, so there's competing needs here that I think we should consider as a budget discussion as opposed to a public art master plan discussion. Dan, you had a point on me? Yeah, I was just thinking the way Walter and, and John were talking about that. Um, almost seems like the 10-year um, uh, plan and, and, it, and the um, of the capital improvement plan, instead of actually being, you know, part of the plan, the master plan, as a, being an appendix. So it's, it, you know, like, I think that that would make people feel more comfortable if, if it was there as, as an appendix saying, you know, here's, here's a proposal as far as what could happen in the next 10 years. You know, this is our, this is our first shot at it. Mm -hmm. And that that way, that could be the you know the first appendix to the deal, and then with the others as far as you know this this does say draft on it, so there could be some couple little changes in there. But that might you know I don't know if that works for for how how it was put together, but it seems to me like that might make it a make it more palatable. Gary, well, and again, I certainly redrafts can occur. I don't think the council is saying that. They are supporting a 0.25% increase of the public arts ordinance at this time. When you accept the plan, you're accepting the roadmap. And if the council has asked in the past, you want more specificity in these plans. You're getting specificity. Oh, now, this is a plan. If you, It's like a strategic plan. The idea isn't that you're going to do everything in your strategic plan. Certainly, there are things you'd like to do. But if you steer away from that goal, you need to either change the goal or you need to find a way to get back to your original goal. And that's what the plan is. So in this case, I don't think the council is binding itself to do anything in here. It's just as budget, pro as budget proposals are going to come to you, your arts department is going to be bringing forward proposals, budget proposals, in conformance with this plan. Council will always have the choice of saying, okay, in Walter's case, we really need to get 3rd Street fixed. So you know, rather than do this, this money has to go to that this year. Maybe next year they do something that's more arts oriented. So th those those decisions are yours every budget cycle. Well, the the good thing about a plan is the fact that it gives you a roadmap for what things could look like a decade from now, without coming around every year and trying to have to pot shot. This is what we'd like to do this year, and then the next year it's a, it's kind of like a hurry up and go sort of thing. This is more of a projected plan and a vision of what could be in 10 or 11 years, which makes to me makes total sense. And of course, the council has discretion on what they want to do and where the money's going to go. Uh, they make the calls and the shots on that. But the Art Commission coming forward with a plan like this, at least it gives the council something to look at and say, okay, this is kind of where they're going. Uh, maybe we can do some of this, maybe we can do some of it, depending on the typical year or, or what may be going on at that time. John, you had another point? Well, 